going on. I was just really impressed Sunday at the program that they put on, and I've been wearing my cape all week. <laughs> Not really. Um, we, uh, I know there's a good group out there tonight, and ministry's going on. And how many of you know that ministry to children is a mandate? And I'm going to say this before we get started. Thank you for being here tonight. I do not take that lightly. I do not think it's a small thing. There are churches that on Sunday morning are three times our size. But they don't have this many people in church on Wednesday night. I can, I can name several. People are struggling. Pastors are struggling. Trying to get people to the house of God. He said, blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled. So I've got preaching on the brain and on the heart, and we're going to go into the book of Habakkuk here in just a few minutes. But first of all, I want us to go into, into a time of praise and worship. So the praise team is coming up, and uh, I want us to have prayer. Father, we thank you for these precious people that are here tonight. I thank you, Lord, for every family, every household represented. We thank you, Lord, that your hand is at work, and I hear your voice speaking. And I believe you have something to speak to us and through us tonight. Help us hear the word of the Lord. Help us to hear the rhema word of the Lord. Help us to hear in these last moments of time, these last moments of the church age. Help us to hear what you're saying to the church. Help us to hear even as you have said in the book of Revelation, to him that hath an ear. Let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. If that's your prayer, would you say amen? How many of you believe that God is speaking to the church? Let's listen to what he says tonight. Let's stand together and worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God, He set me free. 
Yes, he did. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, he did.
teach you right now. Just let him speak into your life right now. Let him speak into your life about your challenges, about your circumstances. Lord, give us an ear to hear. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Now let's say this together. I'm going to see a victory. Amen. I said I'm going to see a victory. Give him praise tonight. I'd like for our ushers to come and serve you. God bless you as you give and tithe. God bless you as you give and tithe. Father, we pray your blessing. And the church said amen. get some honor where honor is due. Jeremy, I want, I want to tell you in front of the church that you're doing a great job with our media, with our Facebook and social media. My wife and I listened to the broadcast from Sunday, and it sounds so much better. On social media, it's sounding so much better. And I'm so thankful. The mix is better, and, and we want to represent the Lord with uh, excellence, and that's, that's what's happening. Uh, I'd like for you to remember, Sister Lynn has a uh, ministry on Thursday night at 6. All right. All right, so remember this, and I think Brother Edward is now doing a prophecy update on 
Facebook. It's a wonderful opportunity for you to catch more uh, of what the Lord is showing this, this man who is fulfilling his calling. And I also wanted to mention, I had planned a meeting of all pulpit preachers on, thir on Sunday. That meeting has been canceled. Uh, the Lord has really given me some direction on how to achieve what I wanted to achieve another way. And so help me get the word out. Um, help me get the word to Sister Emily. Uh, so it'll be different in the bulletin Sunday morning. If, there, if you see somebody, I just... I'll just do our best to get the to get that to get that word out. Um, the goal is we want everybody that has a calling on their life. We want we want to identify that. We want to utilize that, and um, and the Lord has just given me another way to to do that. I don't want to have a meeting and everybody make the effort and the trouble to be here, and then it lasts ten minutes. And we're home when we can achieve that in another way. I want you to go with me in your Bibles uh, tonight. I'm excited about this study. I'll tell you a couple things as you're turning to the book of Habakkuk. It's page 1110. That's a joke. I know some of you didn't catch that. Go to Nahum. You're getting close. <laughs> I want to go to the book of Habakkuk. Let me tell you a couple of things I've got in mind. And, and the Lord is, I, I'm asking the Lord for direction. One is the Sunday, first Sunday revival meetings. I'm really praying about who to get to come in and, and do those evangelistic meetings. You need to hear your pastor. But then there are times when you need to hear an evangelist. And um, we're, we're working on that. I'm also, I'm not committing to anything because I have a tendency to get excited and tell you stuff and then not not get it done i will just tell you that i'm i'm interested in the possibility of maybe taking uh, wednesday nights and tackling a book of the bible and just doing a review some books are longer than others and you know we'll see how that goes but tonight we're going to the book of habakkuk some people pronounce this different ways uh, i'm in the habit of calling him habakkuk so that's what we'll, uh, we'll go with. Um, I'm not going to do as I had initially planned, Brother Edward. I'm not going to read all three chapters. I'm going to challenge you to read all three chapters before you go to bed tonight. I'm going to tell you some things about Habakkuk. We're going to share what God's laid on my heart from Habakkuk. Then I want you to go home and read and study. It's three chapters. You can read it several times before you go to bed tonight. You can read it Every day, it's a, it's a wonderful reading that we're going to talk about the prophet. We're going to talk about uh, his message. Let's go, let's go to Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 14. I, Edward had me set up for the whole book, and I appreciate the effort. I want to go to Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 14. There is a powerful verse. We'll, we'll start with this verse, and then we'll backtrack and go back and talk about um, what's going on. Habakkuk 2 and 14 says, For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Let's read it again. We've heard this verse our whole life. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Many people believe that this verse is saying that the gospel will be preached throughout the world. I don't, I don't necessarily believe that's, that's what he's talking about. Um, the full knowledge of the Lord, you know, some people believe that, uh, that's, that the gospel will be preached. No, I don't think that's it at all. In fact, is as I study and as I have dug into this and been led by the Holy Spirit, there's some things I want to say about that verse, then we're going to go back and talk about Habakkuk. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge. So I... The Hebrew word for that word knowledge, I, I've, I've got it here and I just wanted to read it to you. Uh, the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, Habakkuk 2 and 14. And he, the Hebrew word for knowledge in this verse is a form of the verb yada. 
Yada, which means to know from experience and relationship and to act on that experience. It's about more than facts. Sometimes we use the word knowledge and we're talking about facts that we know. That's not what this is talking about. In the Hebrew, he's talking about a, a, an intimate relationship knowledge. The earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the Lord. I have, I have no doubt that this is referring to the kingdom. And more specifically, I, I, I believe that it is referring to the millennial kingdom. What he is saying to Habakkuk is, Habakkuk, there will be a day when the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the Lord. Now, some are saying that we're in a, in a kingdom time. I, I don't believe that we are in the millennial reign, for sure. I do not believe that, uh, if, you know, the kingdom is quite precise in Scripture and the things that we'll experience then and see then, that's going to happen at a later time. But I do believe in a kingdom mentality. I do believe in a kingdom perception. I do believe in a kingdom approach. We need to understand the authority that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to understand that. But uh, don't, don't, there will be a day when the, thy kingdom will come on earth as it is in heaven. Yes, that describes a principle. We believe that that God works in heaven as, as we call out to him and cry on earth. He said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. He said, seek first the kingdom of God. And we believe that. But he's telling Habakkuk here uh, that there's coming a day. Habakkuk, just relax. Now, why is, let's go back and just talk a little bit about why Habakkuk needs to chill. I love the book of Habakkuk because it's different than the other Ju uh, other prophets in that it's not just a book where Habakkuk or a letter where uh, a prophet relays a message to the people. It's not just a prophet that gets up and says thus saith the Lord and that, that's a part of pro prophecy and it's a part of the prophetic writings. And then let, me, let me tell you this. I, I, I believe that we can have the same experience that Habakkuk had. I believe that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I, uh, in a world of cessationism, in a world where they believe the gifts of the Spirit have stopped, in a world where they believe prophecy has stopped and the anointing has stopped. In fact, we live in a religious world that believes that God does not speak to His people except through the Word of God. There are a lot of people, they do not believe that the Holy Spirit is going to speak to you. I would just say, I beg your pardon. I would just say, uh, when you have tasted this gift, you have understand the Holy Spirit is speaking to us tonight. I look at Habakkuk and I study this man. He's not uh, prophesying like some of the, some of the prophets do. He, this, this book of Habakkuk is a liter it is a, it is a, it is the story of Habakkuk talking to God and God talking to Habakkuk. Well, that intrigues me. I want to know what he said and I want to know what God said back to him. I'm always interested in somebody telling me what God is saying. I have asked people, uh, uh, people that question. I've asked you that question. What is God saying to you? What is the Holy Spirit speaking to you? The body of Christ needs to know. We need to speak those spiritual things. I had a pastor one time and he said, he said, if, 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 it's, if God, if, how did he say that? He said, um, if it's God, don't you think that he would speak it to the pastor first? And my response to him and my response to you is not necessarily. See, God can speak to you. And he will speak to you. And he's speaking to Habakkuk. Now, let's go back to verse 1. And I'm, I'm saving the time of reading the whole thing. But I'm going to tell you, as we look at this story, as we look, out, look at the outline of Habakkuk, we see that Habakkuk in chapter 1 he is just terribly disturbed. He is terribly disturbed and he's crying out to God. And his problem is, he's saying, why, God, why do you allow wicked practices to continue in Judah? He was a prophet to the southern kingdom of Judah. 
And he's crying out to God. Some might even say that he was angry. Some might say that he was, he was uh, uh, bothered. He, he, the way I read it, and you can study it and read it yourself, he was screaming at God. He was yelling at God. Now, we should always approach God with respect. We should always approach God with respect. But, but honey, I'm here to tell you, God wants you to talk to Him. He wants you to say to Him what's on your heart. And this is what Habakkuk was doing. He was saying, God, why? Anybody ever said, God, why? God, why in my life, in my marriage, in my ministry, why haven't you? And he, he asked God, why haven't you done some things? The problem was, God, why do you allow the wicked practice of, of your people in Judah? Why do you allow this? Who are you? Why aren't you moving? Why? And, and he goes on and he says, uh, not only am I frustrated, God, with how you're allowing Judah to live, but he said, you, how long will you do this? And how will you, you're a God of judgment, and how are you going to move and he said, I want some answers. And he tells God, he said, I'm not going to sleep. I'm not going to rest until I hear the answers from you. So God gives him answers. You can study and read uh, chapter 1, five, verse 5 through 11. Or you can go to chapter 2. You can see the answers that he gives. And then in chapter 3, he begins to praise him. Now, I said all that tonight because I, I, won't, I feel like God wants to speak to us. Because there are people today who are frustrated about the world that we live in. We're beyond frustrated. God wants to take your fear and turn it to faith. Okay? I want you to know God's got this. I say God's got this. And I think sometimes God wants us to dig. And He wants us... He said, study to show yourself approved. In the other translation, it said, be busy, get busy, study to show yourself approved. In other words, you got to dig and you got to wrestle with the Lord. Psalms 46 and 1, he said, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. God knows what you're going through. You need to turn to Him, ask Him, discuss with Him. It's not enough just to say, whatever will be, will be. No, no, no. You know, if something's going on, talk to God about it. Something's going on, you don't understand, you talk to God, you find out what, what's going on. I personally believe that you can eventually get an answer for any question. Now, I haven't always preached that, but I haven't always understood that. I believe you can pray through. I believe you can pray until God gives you an answer. It might not be, and it probably won't be what you had in mind. But God's going to help you understand uh, some things, and He will help you understand what's going on in this country. And I believe He wants to show us some things tonight about what's going on in this country. He said, Isaiah 55 and 6, He said, Seek the Lord while He may be found. Call upon Him while He is near. In Hebrews 4, He said, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses. But we have one who is tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach. Everybody say approach. Approach God's throne of grace with confidence. So that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in times of trouble. Or in times of need. So Habakkuk resolves that he's going to hear God. That's, that's something I want you to get in your spirit tonight. You've got to make up your mind that you're going to hear God. You're, in, you're not going to quit praying until God speaks to you. You're not going to quit fasting until God speaks to you. You're, you're going to seek the Lord. And by the way, when you want to hear God, that means sometimes you've got to put the top lip on the bottom lip. Amen? We need to pray. Fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. But when you pray, take time to listen. He was disturbed that Israel was in this deep sin. He was confused by what he saw. Anybody watch the news and get confused? Or get disturbed? 
Habakkuk became even more confused when God spoke to him and said, Oh, I'm, I'm going to use the Chaldeans or I'm going to use the Babylonians. You see, they, Judah had lived under this pressure from the Babylonians for decades now. And here they are. And here they are. And they've been in, in their, their backsliding is what's happened. And, and, and there's sin and there's evil going on. And the Lord says to Habakkuk, uh, I've got this, Habakkuk. I'm going to take care of Israel. By the way, I'm going to use the Babylonians to judge them. Oh, that really got him stirred up. And he begins to tell God how evil the Babylonians are. Like he didn't know. We need to remember that, God, that Habakkuk wasn't testing God. He was sincere. And I want to, I want to tell you something tonight. If, if, we, if we are too busy, or if we are, are too anything, to get a prayer through and an answer from God, then I think we have to consider the possibility of spiritual laziness. God will honor a genuine question. And sometimes He wants to know just how bad you want to know that. He, sometimes God seems to want His people to wrestle. By the way, it, I think Habakkuk, the name Habakkuk, uh, means to wrestle. It's a... Sometimes we have to take our concerns and wrestle with them. I'm up in the night sometimes wrestling with what God is showing me. Praying and listening and seeking God. And we all need to be doing that. We all need to avoid any laziness that says, I'm just going to accept whatever's happening. I'm just going to sit here and let it go. And I'm just going to, you know, people say things like this. Well, God's will will be done. Well... You know, you know, God's, we're going to talk about that some, but, you know, God wants to know your thoughts and your heart. He wants to know, he wants to know what you're willing to do and if your heart is right and, and, and he wants to work through that. And so, you know, an agnostic says that, ag, agnostics say that God is too big to understand. My situation is too big to understand. And so I'm just going to go on through life with my head buried in the sand. And we live in a, a, relig a religious world that has done this. Habakkuk said, I'm not going to do that. I want to know. You said, God, you said, your word says. Now, God, you said, and here you are. That they're, they're living in sin, and he talks about the details, and you can find some of that. I mean, he gets right down to business. He said, look here, there's economical injustice going on. He said, they're, they're tagging on tax that shouldn't be there. They're taking advantage of the poor. God, don't you see that there is slave labor going on? He said, they treat people like fish. They catch them in a net and they drag them around like animals. He said, God, he said, there's irresponsible leadership going on in Judah. How many of you know there's some irresponsible leadership going on in the United States of America? Leadership that is unacceptable. He said, God, there, there's idolatry going on. And he said, I, I don't understand why you're letting it happen. Really, this needs to be, and the, the message God has laid on my heart, is this needs to be the position of the church. We need to be praying and seeking God, and fasting and seeking God, and get our eyes off of people, get our eyes on the Lord, and say, Lord, I want to be a part of, I want to be a part of your holy people. I mean, I'm going to live right, walk right, and I am going to study your word, show myself approved, work with me not to be ashamed. I am going to listen to you. I am going to live for you. And God, I want to know what is it that you're up to. God's got this. I believe with all my heart, and I'll try, to, I'll try to not stray too far and I get back over here to Habakkuk, but I believe with all my heart that judgment's coming to the United States of America. Um, I've been reading this for several weeks and praying over it. And he says in here that God, 
God said, I will use the Babylonians. Let me throw something at you tonight. What if God is going to use Islam to bring judgment on the United States? Let me just stop right here and tell you that most of us are going to have the same response in here tonight that Habakkuk had. And he said, how can you use the Babylonians? They're more evil than, the, than, than, than Judah, than, than my people, than our people. And God, God explains, and he did. This was just prior to the Babylonian captivity. This was, and God did use the Babylonians. And I think sometimes, what if God, I guess what I'm saying is I wonder what God's going to use to bring judgment to the United States of America. And I'm, I'm also here to tell you tonight, I not want anybody to be discouraged from praying. Pray for your nation. Pray for your leaders. Don't stop. God can do anything. But folks, I'm here to tell you judgment's coming to this country. Judgment is coming to this country this country has betrayed God, spat in His face, blasphemed God, and has continually and continually turned away from God. There's a thought that I have really hesitated to, to mention tonight, but I, feel, but I have felt for a few days that I needed to address this. I believe that the United States is going to be judged for owning slaves. You say, oh, pastor, that was way back then. Do you understand, do we understand that God is not mocked? And whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And just like Judah was thinking they were getting by, and they were getting by, and they were getting by, and Habakkuk raised the question, and we need to understand this nation is going to be judged for a, for a lot of things and some things we're not planning on. Some things we don't talk about. Some things we don't understand. Some things we don't have to leave in the hands of God. And I'm going to tell you, this nation, and you see, we love to talk about the godly. We love to talk about the good. We love to talk about this nation and how it was born and how revival. I'm going to tell you, there's a lot about the birth of this nation that is a stench in God's nostrils. Nobody wants to hear this. Did you know that Christopher Columbus wasn't a godly man? It depends on what book you read. We come to this nation and we steal and we kill and we take over and say, well, yeah, God was raising us up. I'm going to tell you, God, I believe God raised up this nation and I believe it was for Israel. I believe that the Number one reason he raised up the United States of America is not for me and you to be wealthy. I don't believe it so you and I can prosper. I believe personally that it was to raise up a nation that would protect Israel. And we quit protecting Israel. And judgment is coming to this nation. And God told Habakkuk, basically he said, look, judgment's coming. Judgment is coming and and, and, and judgment then will come through uh, the Babylonians and I will win. This is what he says. God says, I will win. We win, sister. We win on God's side. We win. Now, we've got to get that in our spirit and understand that, that we cannot be lazy. We've got, to, we've got to dig in and we've got to pray and seek God and, and trust in the Lord. We, and he even said in the book of Habakkuk, he said, and it's quoted three times in the New Testament, that the just shall live by faith. And I, I just want to tell you that we need to take that truth and dig in and understand that it is, it is not by might nor by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. Folks, you and I, got judgment's coming to this nation, and the only escape is faith in Jesus Christ. We are saved by faith, through faith, by grace. According to the Word of God. Now, I'm going to tell you, you try to save yourself, you try to, live, you try to do this on your own, you're going to see the judgment of God. I want to encourage everybody here, dig in the Word. 
Dig in the Word. Make sure that your understanding is right. I've had people say a lot of times, well, I just feel like this is right. You better not go by feelings. There's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof is, way is, is death. We need to understand. So, you know, Habakkuk was saying, I'm going to wait here as long as it takes. And so we need to be, we need, we need to be diligent like he was. God answers Habakkuk. Romans 1, and let me, just, let me just for the sake of time, 2 Peter 3 and 9, he says, The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness. I'm here to, to remind you tonight that God wins. This is not about a denomination winning. This is not about even a culture, except a Jesus culture. This is about God winning and those who have trusted Jesus Christ as their Savior being on the winning side. And I personally believe that we will avoid the wrath of God if we have put our trust in God according to the Scripture. One thing I'm trying, and I'm being repetitive, but I want to I reiterate tonight, and I will say it till the day I die until the, uh, until the Lord comes. Judgment's coming to America. Hard times are coming. God is not mocked. Don't blame. Listen, it's not a Democrat problem. It's not a Republican part. It's a, it's a people problem. People have blasphemed God, turned their back on God. Churches have turned their back on God. There's lukewarm. He said, if you're neither hot or cold, lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. We've got sin leading churches. We've got sin leading, leading praise and worship. We've got sin preaching in the pulpit. We've got sin all over the nation calling themselves godly and calling themselves uh, a religious movement of God. And folks, I'm here to tell you, we have, we have to separate ourselves from that sin. I want to encourage everybody here individually. He said in Acts 1 and 7, It is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. Ecclesiastes 3.17. He said. I said to myself. God will bring into judgment. Both the righteous and the wicked. For there will be a time for every activity. A time to judge every deed. You and I will be judged. Do not, do not hear me wrong. You're going to be saved by God's grace. I believe personally. I believe we're going to go in the, the rapture. We're going to go be with the Lord. But we're still going to stand before God in judgment. And the only way we're going to pass that judgment is to put our trust in Jesus Christ. So I've come here tonight to encourage you. Don't get caught up in what Washington is, is doing wrong. Be aware. I don't want you to be unaware. I want you to be aware of what's happening in the world, okay? So don't, don't hear me wrong. What I'm saying is... Don't be like Habakkuk where you're over in a corner and you're scared to death. You don't Now listen, this doesn't come lightly. This is not something that I just, you accept because pastor said it. You need to dig until you find peace. And I need to say that again tonight. Somebody needs to hear this. You need to dig until you find peace. I feel it in my spirit to tell somebody here tonight. You are not going to find peace just because you go to church. You're not going to find peace just because you pay your tithe. Oh, that's been preached. You're not going to find peace because mama had the Holy Ghost. No. You're going to find peace when you have the knowledge, the revelation, the yada, that relationship with God where you're living with Him and walking with Him and you've got peace in your relationship with Him. Folks, I'm here to tell you, I, I, I want to know all the facts. But I refuse for the facts to drive me into fear. We will continue to state the facts around here. We will continue to warn. We will continue. But I also want you to hear there's a place in God. There's a place. There's a plane. There is a level far above the devil. And if all you're doing is playing church, you're going to miss it. If, if what you're doing is playing church, 
then the fear that's coming upon you will become your reality. If all you're doing is going through the motion, the Bible says that uh, they had the form of godliness, but they're denying the power. You know what? One of the things that the Holy Spirit is speaking to me in recent days is that the preaching needs to be changed. The preaching needs to change. It needs to be charged and anointed by the Holy Ghost. And whether it is whispered or screamed, that's not the point. But it needs to bring conviction. We got backsliders sitting on church pews in the Church of God and even in Fort Payne Church of God that are lost and undone without God. And many times there's a not enough of the preached word and the anointed word to bring them under conviction. That has to change. We have to dig and pray and seek God and, and see a, a, a move of God to where we can hear God and say, God, what is your plan for the church? You know God's got a plan for the church. When I studied God's plan for the church, I'm soon, I soon realized that I don't want to get too far off of this, but I want you to understand that the Word of God, God's got a plan for Israel, and God's got a plan for the church. And there's a difference. The church age is about to close. Ask God what He's doing with the church. He'll tell you. He'll tell you. He's coming after His bride without spot or wrinkle. Well, Pastor, I better get to working on the spots. Hello? That's what we're here talking about. Working on those spots. Well, you've got your, you've, many people got their eyes on somebody else across town or across the road or somebody else across the building. See? Honey, you don't need to worry about their spots. You need to worry about your spots. Amen? Jude, Jude said there are spots in your feast of charity who feed themselves without fear. They're bold. Meaning what? It means they're lost. If you're here tonight and you're not where you need to be with God, my question is this, why not? Why aren't you praying and seeking God? Why aren't you in an altar? People say, well, every time I go to church, I need to be in the altar. You need to be in the altar more than just in church, honey. Now, the only time you pray is when you're at church, you're behind. Now, folks, I'm, I'm here to tell you, God's got a plan for the body of Christ. Some of it we do not know for sure, but much of it we do. Judgment is coming to planet Earth. Personally, I am, not, I am not interested in a false teaching that says that we're in the kingdom of God and it's just going to get better and better until, until you know, we're all living and reigning and ruling. On. It's a misunderstanding of Scripture. It's not getting better. It's getting worse. And it's going to be worse tomorrow. And it's going to be worse next week. So what, what is God doing with the church? He's preparing us. He's preparing us with fire. Let me ask you a question. Are you being prepared? You know, being prepared, being prepared can be rough. Amen? All things work together for the good to them that love the Lord. Sometimes it's working together. It's rough. Sometimes God, God allows us. To, and, and so many people, so many, so many of us, I see it all the time where people are totally focused on two or three prayers that they've got, and they don't understand why God won't answer their prayer and save their kids and say this. Well, I want to tell you just generally, I'm not in an exhaustive list tonight, but I want to tell you God is working so that you will begin to really pray and see God. The one thing I would tell people here tonight is, is, for, you to, is for you to hear this in your spirit. You need to pray more. And we live in a world that says pray less. I can take you to preachers tonight that say, you don't need to pray, honey. You need to live on your knees. Sir, you need to live on your knees. Praying and seeking God. Secondly, we need to understand that our children and our grandchildren are free moral agents and we can only do so much. Now, God can do anything. 
But you know, I've made up my mind. I'm going to have victory no matter what my kids do. No matter what. I take it personal. Listen, if everybody, we've been here 19 years. Everybody that's come through this church in the last 19 years was here tonight. We couldn't get them all in this room. We probably couldn't get them all in this room and in the activities building. Every time somebody falls away, every time. And the Bible said in the last days there'd be a, a great falling away. I've seen people get touched by the Holy Ghost and before I know it, before I know it, they're in jail. Before I know it, they're fussing and cussing and carrying on. Before I know it, they're going through a divorce. Before I know it, and that's not a judgmental statement for people that go through a divorce. I want you to hear my heart. I have seen the Holy Ghost touch people and them turn their backs on God. I have seen in this building in recent weeks people who were touched by the Holy Ghost came and were touched on one day and I haven't seen them in eight weeks. What's going on? They're falling away. I'm here tonight to challenge you to say with Habakkuk, I'm not, I'm not quitting until I get an answer. I'm not, you know, i got to help me. Everybody pray that I won't be mean right now. People, people post on Facebook. Sometimes I think they're, they're saying, I'm not going to quit posting until I get the job done. I'm not going to quit being a smart aleck until I get the job done. I'm not, I, I, want, I want people to get the... Uh, you know, I, I've read them like this. You know who you are. You know what? If you, talk, if you talk to God half as much as you talk to people you don't even know. Amen? God wants me and you to be like Habakkuk. He wants us to be concerned. And it starts with a concern for our own life. He wants us to be concerned for our nation. He wants us to be concerned for the body of Christ. And he will give you answers. And what he told Habakkuk, and you can read it in chapter 2 and part of chapter 1. And then what he told, to, uh, <laughs> what he told Habakkuk was that he, he's got it under control. And he will judge. And then in chapter 3, it's a song of praise. Habakkuk begins to praise God. He begins to worship God. It's a great song of praise. Everybody wants to be a part of praise. The modern day praise movement. Let me say this very carefully, Sister Kathy. I, 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 want, I want to be careful. There is a part of the modern day praise movement that is straight from hell. It's not about the style of the song. It's not about what a lot of people think it is. You know what it's about? It's about people singing praise and living like the devil. People living in sin. And they're calling us haters. They call us haters because we preach even what I'm preaching tonight. Well, you're just a hater. No, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, to speak truth into your life. I'm trying to tell you that if you will really get serious with God, it's not enough for you to get serious here. It, it might start here. But I challenge some folks here tonight to go home and lay on your face before God and seek God with all of your heart and listen to God. Get in His Word. Seek His Word. There's folks, I'm speaking by the Spirit tonight when I tell you we got folks playing church. If you're not careful, you're going to miss God. You're going to miss God. And let the Lord speak to you. I find Him so faithful. Sometimes I'll ask Him about things that people would probably think I'm crazy if they knew. But you know what? He speaks to me about those things. He walks with me. And He talks with me. And He tells me I am His own. Why? Because of the knowledge, the yada, the knowledge of God. I'm getting ready for kingdom. 
I'm getting ready for eternity with God. This world is not my home. When I was young, I used to have dreams and ambition about owning land and different things. That Those things are gone. This world is not my home. It's, it, 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 it's, it's leaving me. Because lately, all I've got is leaving on my mind. Stand with me if you would. I've had people tell me, I don't want to be a part of a church that's always talking about leaving. Always talking about the rapture. Well, I'm going to tell you, you're not in the wrong church. You just, you just need to be patient. And it's one of the main points I wanted to make tonight. And I'll, I'll close with this. Be patient with God. Habakkuk. Listen, God's timing is different than our timing. I got you standing up. I'm not going to make you stand long. But I want you to understand that our timing is different. You know what the scripture said over there in the New Testament? There's one place it said, when the fullness of time had come. Well, the fullness of time is going to happen. And the trump of God shall sound. One morning, this world's going to wake up. And it's going to be totally different than it's ever been. I believe that could be in a short amount of time. Let's seek God. Let's grow closer to God. Don't, don't retire on God and sit back and just in a recliner and say, my experience with God 30 years ago is going to carry me through. No, no, no. Let's draw close to God. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit would do the work that you would draw men and women close to you, even as you begin to speak to Habakkuk, that you would speak to us, that we would hear the word of the Lord, that you would produce a praise in us, even as you did Habakkuk. Father, that communion with you that he had, that's what I want. I want to walk with you and talk with you and be with you and know you in relationship and in intimacy. I want you to work in my mind and in my life. And I want you to do that in our lives. Father, speak truth to us. Help us to understand these truths. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And the church said amen. Thank you. Um, there's been something really burning in my heart since uh, Edward spoke Sunday morning. Um, the Lord keeps saying over and over to me, and I was actually supposed to say it Sunday morning, but when I opened my eyes, the children were all lined up up here. I thought, oh, I'll have to do it Wednesday night. But um, he said the faith that we're all going to desperately need very soon is the faith that we build and work on and uh, establish today. Oh, yeah. We can't wait another day. We have to start today building our faith <coughs> yes. and we do that in the word of god faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of god and i thought about the when the lord dropped that in my heart was when edward was talking about the people going to prison for those little slips of paper just a tiny little tag of paper with a little bit of a scripture written on it and i got to thinking and it blessed me so much why would they put somebody in jail for something that big one little scripture because it's that powerful yes. That's how powerful the Word of God is. If you just memorize that little bit, just a little bit, nothing fit on a little piece of paper. If you memorize that, if you take it to heart, if you build it and, and just quote it and say it over and over and get it down in your heart till it faith arises, there's, we win. Faith is the victory. Yeah, every, everybody be seated. There's some words that need to be spoken. I, I just uh, was going to, it was on my heart to share it. And when Sister Candy came up, God, I'm working on a message right now, and it's to do with what does it take to stand? And, you know, my husband teaches a lot about what we're going to face, and pastors teach and what we're going to face um, here in these last days. And that thought, I want you to get that thought in, my, in your mind, what is it going to take to stand? Because I honestly don't believe we understand 
what it's going to take to stand. It's going to take more than our determination. Because I'll read, and Peter, Peter said this in Luke chapter 22. He said to Jesus, Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. That's what Peter said. That was out of his determination. But we know what happened to Peter. He turned around and denied Jesus Christ three times in just a short time after that. So it's going to take more than our determination. It's going to take more than our experiences, our family experiences, that mo what mom and pop and grandma had and grandpa had and all these things. It's going to take so much more. And I, I, God's, put, God's going to work this out in me, but I'm telling you to really think about that question. What is it going to take to stand? And Candy just, just hit on it there. And Edward as well, it, we're, our faith has got to be built up daily. This can't be something that we just wait till the time comes and we say, oh, you know, God, help me have the faith. Our faith needs to be built up daily. This has got to be a daily, daily endeavor for our faith to be built up so that we can, in fact, stand when the time comes. Amen. There's a, a couple verses that we need to remember tonight with this words that's spoken by Sister Candy and Sister Dana. The Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And yes, the Bible teaches us that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Do not always think that that is always just the scripture, and I don't mean that, for lack of better terms, it, I don't mean just the scripture, but I mean it's not only, it's not only the scripture, it's the word of the Lord that God speaks to us. This is what we're talking about. Let's hear God. Let's pray. Let's build our faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Yes, that's reading. But it's also, it's also praying and allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Now, if you try to do that without this, you're going to get in, you're going to get in trouble and hurry. Because you'll keep hearing voices, but it won't be God's voice. See? So we're not talking about that. We're talking about praying until you have that knowledge that he said, that yada, that experiential knowledge that, you know, I, I know this is what God is doing. Folks, these are the days, as Sister Dana, I believe, is saying, these are the days where we have to go all out. We have to sell out. There, there are things in our life that need some, I know there are people that don't believe what we're saying. Well, let's quit. Let's quit giving them so much credence. There are people that do believe. And there are people that need to understand that in the days to come, this world is going to change. And we teach this and people get upset and they say, they say things like, like, like this. I've heard that my whole life. You ain't heard this your whole life. What we're seeing now... And what we're saying now has not been said. In the days to come, there is going to be currency changes that are going to rock this world. And folks, I'm going to tell you, there are things coming that we don't know about. So let's get ready. Let's build our faith. Let's pray and seek God. Let's put away those things which so easily beset us. I, I've talked to people in depth many times, Jerry, and they say things like this. They say things like, I, I've always felt like one day I would really sell out and serve God. Well, it, it needs to be today. That's, that's what it needs to be th today. What is today? June, June, June the what? 21st. Today is the day of salvation. Don't wait. Don't put it off. I saw a sign over at night or at a church that said, get ready soon. I've never seen it quite like that. But folks, we gotta, we got to get in the Word of God. Quit trying to fix other people. Quit trying to fix other people.
So how important is that story that you think God let us hear it twice? Amen? Edward, Edward told us word for word this story on Sunday. And, you're, and, and he's, the Holy Spirit is reminding us. I don't take that lightly. I don't know how, I don't know how people could be urged more. And in the past, there have been times when we have tried to physically or humanly persuade people and manipulate people. We're past that. You've got to let the Holy Spirit do His work in you. Amen? No. I heard, I heard a, a, a preacher preaching. I don't know. He was from India, I believe. And some of y'all might have heard this, but he's preaching. And he said, when I got saved, he said, God began to do miracles in my life. He said, I believe God for everything. I believe God for everything. I had nothing. He said, I found a, I found a pair of shoes that were too short. They were sandals. And he said, God, I need you to extend these shoes so I can wear them. He said, in front of his eyes, God extended those shoes. Now, most of the world laughs and says that you don't really believe that. Oh, I really do believe that. We're in a time where, where we, when you go to China and preach the gospel, there are places where the first thing they ask you and tell you is do a miracle. Raise the dead. They won't even listen to you. Folks, the American church is twice dead and plucked. I know some of y'all don't like me saying this, but it's twice dead and plucked up by the roots. And we have got, we have got, we have got to make whatever change. You say, well, I'm going to find me a church that's on fire. Why don't, why don't you get on fire? And help your church get on fire. Amen? I'm going to find a church with a, with a better pastor. Well, you, that wouldn't be hard. But I'm here to tell you there ain't no pastor that's more sincere. I want to see a move of God here, but I want, it to, I want it to be a real genuine move of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Stand with me. Everybody, anybody else got anything you need to share? Father, go with us, teach us, lead us, guide us, draw us. Help us to fulfill what we feel in our hearts that we need to do and draw closer to you. You said if we draw nigh to you and draw close to you that you could draw close to us help us lord to resist the enemy for you said if we'd resist him that he would flee from us father help us to pray until we pray through help us lord to pray until the fire falls in our homes oh my god help us to pray through to the holy ghost every one of us in our bedrooms and in our living rooms oh god send the move of your holy spirit let there be such a move of the Holy Spirit that those around us that are lost and undone backslid that they will absolutely fall under conviction. I ask it in Jesus' name. The church said amen. God bless you. You're dismissed.